The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, 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 TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesavento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls. Now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, we're back here with our commodity show again this week, 877-927-6648. Uh, uh, I'm going to start the show with uh, December corn. Uh, as you can see, we have broken through the 61% retracement. That's where we took our first uh, stance in going long corn. Uh, we took a $0.10 cent loss, i.e. $500 in that, after about seven days. Uh, frankly, after the market started going below the 61% retracement, you could have, you could probably tighten your stop, but because I'm only on once a week, there's nothing I can do about that. And, of course, we've gone through the 786 retracement, and now we're approaching the double bottom in corn down around 440 per bushel. Uh, I'm going to try to give you an idea of why I think this is important, but we'll have to wait and see. I just spoke with Rich Anderson. Uh, he happens to be in uh, Chicago at a grain conference right now with some of the big uh, leaders in the grain, uh, Bungie and Cargill and some of the others, and uh, they're talking about, you know, what's going on in corn and stuff like that. Folks, we're, we're in the midst of the growing season now in corn. The old adage is corn must be as high as an elephant's eye on the 4th of July, and whether it's going to be there or not, we'll have to wait and see. We've only got a couple weeks to wait, about three weeks to wait, and see if it's going to get to that level. Now, whether this double bottom is going to hold is a $64 question. The way that I'm going to play this is I wanted to see if it will take out all those lows that we made uh, back in December when it was trading around the 438 a bushel, and I want to see if it'll do that. And if there's nothing there at that time, then that's where I would really like to take a look uh, at becoming a farmer again and, you know, buying my 200 acres and uh, seeing if I can get, uh, you know, the market to uh, capitulate this time and move in my direction. It's very, very, very seldom that we go through a crop year without at least one or two scares, uh, weather scares or, you know, geopolitical scares like we're going on now with the saber rattling that's happening and making crude oil uh, you know, moving so much, uh, you know, to the upside today. But uh, whether that's going to happen in the grain markets or not, because grains are used as a as a, a tool of war, believe me. They use that in negotiation a great deal because uh, oil is indigestible, folks. Uh, wheat and corn are not. And uh, most major wars are caused because of two things, power and the demand for food. And so, believe me, when people, you think people are, are really upset about the price of crude oil, maybe going to, you know, back to $140 a, a barrel, you can imagine what it would be like if they can't get food. They, they would really get upset. We're very lucky here in the Western uh, Hemisphere with all the, you know, wonderful growing seasons that we have, and we're, we're pretty, pretty fortunate in that. If you get in areas, uh, you know, in the Middle East and in Africa and places like that where they have these terrible droughts, it's not very much fun. So what I'm going to do now is I want to show you what I think is important here with this double bottom. Uh, this is the long-term weekly chart in corn uh, going back the last three and a half years. And as you can see, we made a, a high in corn up around 610 a bushel uh, way back in uh, July uh, of, uh, of 2011. Then the market uh, proceeded to drop about $1.40 a bushel, which is equivalent to $7,000. Then it rallied up, and as you can see, it made a double top. It went up and took out the high of 2011 by about a half a cent and then that's when the big decline started and it went from you know 610 down to the 430 level and then we had a couple of good rallies during that time and now we have a potential for a double bottom coming in around this 434 level folks if the 430 level doesn't hold this we could easily make three dollars a bushel in corn when I first started trading corn, you know, back when uh, Moses and I were trading together back in the, uh, the early 60s, uh, the average uh, range on corn for the week was around $0.02. Cents. And it traded, I believe, between $1.10 and $1.20 a bushel 
would be a monthly range or at least a weekly range in corn. There was virtually nothing happening. At that time, once in a while, you might see it move three or four cents, but there were some months there where it didn't even move at all. It was almost, uh, it was like watching paint dry. And, uh, it, you know, thankfully, we had a lot of other things that we could trade during that time, like pork bellies and cattle and stuff like that. But uh, corn would really, really get uh, very, very quiet. Wheat was trading for around 225 to 250 a bushel. And soybeans were about 325 a bushel. And, of course, you know, we've had some big moves here because of inflation. But, really, there's no inflation because, you know, the Federal Reserve has taken care of that. Uh, they don't factor in food and energy because that's not included in our, our daily, uh, daily lives. So we don't actually get to, to use that very much. So we'll have to wait and see uh, what's going to happen to this corn. Uh, there's nothing to do now. Uh, the crop report came out the other day. It was conceived as uh, pretty bearish, and then with the other things that have happening. Actually, uh, Rich told me today that uh, even the people in Chicago, uh, the grain people, this you're talking about Bungie and Cargo and uh, some of these other large firms, uh, you know, ADM, they, they, they're really talking about the fact that uh, Eric Cantor was, uh, you know, uh, lost his seat. Uh, and that is really, uh, they're afraid that there could be some kind of backlash that could uh, affect farm subsidies and other stuff like this. You know, this, a, boys and girls, this is why I'm a technician. I have to let this stuff go over my head because of two things. One, I don't understand it. And two, I don't think anybody else does either. The only thing I need to know is I need to watch the price action. If prices are going up, there's more buyers. If prices are going down, there's more sellers. It's as simple as that. You don't have to know fundamentals. Maybe it helps if you did know them, but even then they change you know, very quickly sometimes. But the prices, you know, people can lie, they can cheat, they can give you misinformation, but they can't hide from you. If prices are going up, there's got to be buying, and if prices are going down, there's got to be selling. I remember uh, talking to my, uh, my, my internist when I first moved here to Tucson 20-some years ago. Uh, his family had a huge stake in Portland Cement. They were one of the largest stockholders, and they were bought out by Enron. And the stock of Enron, you know, went from 90 to zero. Well, when the stock got down to about 60, you know, he was very concerned, and he actually called me. I don't, I don't follow Enron, but I looked at the chart, and I said, you know, this doesn't look very good. And... Uh, I said, if it goes below 50, I said, you really ought to cut your losses, you know, because you're still way ahead. Well, it went to 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, 0. He didn't do anything. The family lost, uh, you know, millions and millions of dollars. So keep in mind that, you know, the price is what really counts here. Uh, if prices are going down, you know, they're, they're more sellers. Look at Apple. At 703, the whole world wanted it. You know, at 385, nobody wanted it. You know, now it's back to, you know, basically uh, 680 and change. You know, everybody wants it again. So, you know, who knows? But that's the main thing that we try to keep an eye on is uh, what price action is doing. And that gives us the uh, what we think is our edge as pattern recognition traders to tell us that, yeah, we're, we, we think we know a little bit because prices are going down because there's more sellers. Okay, now we're going to switch over. We're going to switch over to the wheat market here. And take a look at this because wheat has now uh, broken below the 786 level. Uh, just give me one second to get the uh, chart up in here so we can see it. We'll be able to see uh, wheat over the last uh, year. And as you can see, we made that big butterfly pattern, uh, just absolutely textbook uh, ABCD pattern up at the 742 level. And we've since dropped about $7,500 uh, per contract in that. And now, with the bearish action that we had yesterday, we've gone below uh, the 786 that came in around the 593 level. We're still trading around 588, but um, I wouldn't even touch this until it gets back above the 786 level and look for a small uh, retracement to try to buy it. Uh, if you look closely at this chart, you can go back into to, uh, late January and you can see the really nice butterfly pattern that the wheat was making at the bottom at the uh, 550 per bushel uh, before it rallied uh, almost $10,000 uh, over the next four and a half months uh, to get up to the uh, level of uh, where we made our top up at the 742 per bushel. So we need to, uh, you know, to keep that in mind. Uh, I was going to have Rich Anderson on today as my guest, but he was unable to do it because he was uh, in uh, Chicago 
the, the other two guests that I was trying to get on, uh, Rick LaRusso uh, and, uh, oh gosh, Jeff Silverman, they're also in um, Chicago. So we're, we're just alone today, folks. If you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. That's basically uh, the number to call in if you have any questions you know, on the commodities, and we'll, uh, we'll try to answer them uh, if we can. Now, the uh, next one I wanted to talk about is we're going to go through the soybean market here, and uh, we have two soybean uh, contracts to look at. One is the, the new crop soybeans that are, that are planted, being, there are planted now, that will harvest into uh, October. These are the November soybeans, uh, and I'm going to put that up into the, uh, uh, the room here so you'll be able to see it into Tiger TV. And what I wanted to point out was the fact that when it was making its high up there, uh, you'll be able to see the one, two, three, four, five expanding triangle that we had at the top uh, at that level. And then the market broke. Uh, we rallied up to a 382 retracement over the last five days. And now we're starting to uh, accelerate to the downside here in new crop soybeans. And this part of this is sympathetic selling, folks. And the reason for that is is that you know there are a lot of these people that are long corn and beans and some of these other things they have to get rid of their positions and when they do that, you know the margin calls come in and that's what uh, causes the uh, you know the problem. So well, whether that's going to happen uh, over a longer period of time, I'm not sure. But the fact that it took four days to make a 382 retracement uh, from a technical standpoint is not a very good sign. I want to highlight this because. Uh, this is very important because it has a tendency uh, to pull the uh, this the easily soybeans could drop another uh, fifty cents per bushel just on this downswing that we could have uh, in the uh, soybeans should we break uh, another oh eight or ten cents that would trigger this a b c d to the downside uh, which would bring us down to the one point six one eight on the daily. Boy, that's really nice. I just saw that. Hold on. Boy, that's where they're going. No question about that. Wow. This is Mother God and Country stuff. Hold on just a second. Okay, that's the November uh, soybean chart, and I've drawn in the ABCD pattern that's there showing the 382 retracement that occurred uh, over the last four or five trading days. We rallied up to a 382. I've been so involved in the uh, Forex markets and uh, gold and crude oil that I uh, I actually missed this and I wish I would have seen that yet, uh, a few days ago I don't think I would have done anything into a crop report but it actually would still give me a, a chance to get in it that would be fair enough I think if we get uh, get to that point we'll have to wait and see we're going to take a little break here the Dow down about 60 and uh, NASDAQ down a bit so is the S&P TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. 
For all the details and to find out how the signal box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, and we have a caller from uh, Odessa. I hope that's Texas. Don, are you there? <laughs> uh, sorry, Larry. It's Odessa, Florida. <laughs> is it? There is an Odessa, Florida, too? Yeah, it's just north wow. of Tampa. Wow. Wow. Um, I've got a question for you. Um, sure. Uh, I'm using the uh, uh, cash palladium as a um, as an example, a five-year daily chart. What would you put more? It seems obvious today after today's move, but um, what would you put more emphasis on when you're generally trading um, futures contracts? Now, I'm, I don't trade contracts; I trade other stuff. But uh, I have a lot of palladium. <laughs> okay. Um, so, do you put more emphasis on volume or open interest? Well, I, the volume uh, is very important, and, and the open interest is very important, too, because the thing that you want to be watching is to make sure, I don't know what the Palladium is doing. I've never traded it. I don't even know what the price of it is, but I do understand open interest and volume. So you have to watch because if you're in a position and open interest is dropping and volume is dropping, that means players are leaving the market. But if you've got the reverse of that, if you've got open interest increasing, and volume increasing, then you've got players coming into the market. So you, what you want is the latter. You want to have more open interest and more players coming into the market. That's what, what you should have. So if you're in a position that's going against you and the market is uh, you know, hurting you and the open interest is leaving, you've got a big problem. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, uh, would you take a look at that chart for me? I wish I could, but I don't even plot it. I would, you know, oh, I have okay. never seen a palladium chart. Uh, you, you know, I, and I, you know, when I saw you, uh, they told me what you were going to talk about, and I told uh, TF Finance, I don't know anything about palladium, but I still wanted you to, to talk to you because there's a lot of things that I don't know about, which everybody understands, but there's so many things to trade out there, Don, that uh, we have to narrow it down 
to about 40 things that, you know, the hedge fund that I am with, uh, that we work with, and palladium is not on that. We don't even trade platinum, and, you know, that's, that's a relatively liquid one, but I don't think palladium is that liquid. I understand. But, but I don't know anything about it, my friend. I don't know what the daily volume is or anything. So that's okay. pr probably a wrong uh, wrong thing to look at. <laughs> I use it in my business, and I, I have, over the years have collected quite a bit of it. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully I'll be able to retire on it someday. Um, and that's why I keep my eyes on it. I don't actually trade it. It's just it's part of uh, I, I, I end up with scrap every month, and I, I save it, and that's the only reason why I keep track of it. Okay. So, yeah, it had it had busted over a five year um, high, and uh, I talking to someone else yesterday about it. They thought we were having a uh, a triple top, which apparently that's what it looks like exactly. It hadn't broke the up channel yet, but it looks like it's heading that way. But anyway, it had broken that, uh, and I was really hoping it was going to be a breakout, um, and it doesn't look like it's going to be. Um, okay, so do 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 something for yourself. Okay, go to www.cme.com. Uh huh. That's that's Chicago Mercantile, and I believe they'll they they they're all the, they're all the exchanges now through CME, and go in under market data and look for open interest. Okay, and if the open interest is dropping, going into new high ground like that, get out. Okay, that that's simple. I mean that's that's a no brainer. This is what happened to gold and silver, you know, back when they were making their highs at uh, nineteen hundred in gold and forty nine dollars in silver. They were making new highs, but the open interest was dropping. The, the only thing that was making new highs was the shorts covering. Oh, well, that was that, just that, that, I, I actually have open interest on my t uh, Ameritrade charts on my uh, Banker Swim okay. charts. Okay, there's your answer. Then just look at it. if it's going up, then you know, hang in there. But if it's not, then be really careful. Either tighten your stop or just get out. Okay. What okay. is what is the open interest doing, by the way? Right now, it's at um, forty thirty six, according to the charts I have. And back five years ago, the open interest was eleven six ten. So it had broke yeah. out on on uh, open interest, but it was shy on volume. Uh -huh. That was really what my confusion was about. Of course, is, open, my, is open interest increasing over the past uh, week or so, or has it been decreasing? Can you tell that? Uh, you know, I don't have the chart up this minute. I wrote this stuff down. So I think it's about the same. It stayed relatively the same. It, okay. it, it, uh, it has a cycle. It, I, I think it's whenever yeah. the uh, contracts um, change. Well, when you, when you go to new high ground, you really need new people coming in. Otherwise, it's just short covering. Well, it's way down today, I expect. Okay. So, I well, just know. just protect yourself, my friend, and remember, uh, palladium is indigestible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to I used to tell people that when they had. So I'm holding gold and silver forever, and I you know I kept telling him I said you know gold, silver, crude oil, all that stuff is indigestible. Whereas if you own a farm, at least you can feed yourself. You know, I'm a big believer in that very same thing. We started preparing for hurricanes here some years ago, and it's all our emphasis is all on food. Mm -hmm. It's all on food. We raise a lot of our own food in, in my own home here. Uh -huh. And and whenever I comment about these prepper groups, I always tell them food is a lot more important. So I'm in total agreement with you. Amen. Well, listen, you have a wonderful time and live every day in an attitude of gratitude. Thank you very much. You bet, Don. Bye-bye. Hey, we still got the Dow up down a little bit, and the market's coming back just a tad. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that 
extra edge when it comes to trading and investments? Then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile.com in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks. And during the break, I was fortunate enough to have a chart sent to me by our friends at TFNN and the Tigers, Dan. And they put up the Palladian chart for me going back about the last seven years. And uh, we were just talking, uh, Don, I hope he's still listening in Odessa, Florida. Boy, be really careful here, my friend. This has got a lot of things yelling at you that there's uh, potential trouble in River City and the fact that we've had this uh, big move to the downside today after making a higher high. Uh, that uh, reeks of a major reversal. And if your open interest doesn't, and also volume doesn't verify that it should be going up, in other words, a drop in both volume and open interest, I would really take a look at it. Okay, now, uh, I'm not able to, just a second, um, what, I, what I want to talk about now is we have another caller uh, from uh, Florida. Uh, ben, I think it's in Tallahassee, the home of Freddie Boom Boom Cannon. Are you there, Ben? Yes, Ray, how are you doing? I'm good. What can I do for you, my friend? Well, you may have... Uh... Uh, kind of it was a great segue. Uh, my question is, I'm not a real big commodity uh, guy from a trading perspective or a fundamental standpoint, and and just want to get your opinion. Uh, you know, given the, the when the market uh, correction, the big correction back in uh, 2007, 2008 occurred, regardless of the Fed, right, the huge Fed uh, Fed intervention. Uh, has there been one, two, three core commodities that you found continue to be good leading indicators as far as uh, the direction of the market? Well, I'll tell you, for years, for me, it was copper. But, uh, you know, copper had a correlation with the stock market been of about 90%. But believe me, in 2011, 
uh, they said goodbye to that because you know copper went uh, you know basically straight down, and it's been going down. It's up today, but it basically is uh, you know still heading lower. So I, that's the only one that I used to watch, uh, you know, as far as an indicator of what the stock market does. But remember, we've never had, you know, uh, a type of a Fed that has done this. And, it, and it's not only our Fed, it's all the central banks are flooding, you know, the markets with money. And uh, this is a giant experiment. We really don't know what's going to happen with it. There should be a lot of inflation, given the fact that there's so much money awash. But evidently, and it doesn't seem to be, I mean, stocks have been going up, but the volume certainly doesn't, uh, you know, support that. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But copper was the only one I had, Ben. Great. Okay. Yeah, just uh, so it sounds sounds like the Fed has really screwed up a lot of different technical aspects of how traders uh, uh, trade the, the overall market. Actually, I don't see any really difference in the trading patterns themselves, but I think they are playing games. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see what history says about it. Okay. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for, thanks for calling in, Ben. Okay, we've got another caller. It's our good friend and superb market analyst, John in Philadelphia. John, are you there? I am uh, very well. Uh, it's so good to uh, have you back on the air the past couple of weeks. Um, so my uh, my welcome back to you. Well, my traveling days are over, my friend, at least for the near term. I'm not going to plan anything and probably till uh, after Christmas. So maybe around Christmas time I might do something, but uh, I just need the rest and I enjoy, you know, just being, uh, you know, trading. And so that's what we'll, we'll do. But anyway, what can I do for you, my friend? Well, I wanted to uh, first uh, just discuss soybeans with you. And thanks so much. You uh, just posted up. July beans, and it's that particular contract that I see is breaking real hard today. What do you see there? Oh, I see it too. It's in fact, if you look at the difference between November uh, and uh, the, the July, you can see the July is breaking much faster. It had a shot more shallow rally. Uh, you know, the rally was virtually non-existent in the July beans, whereas November were able to rally at least three or four days. But these beans look at least fifty cents, or maybe even more. A lot lower. I know you were you were talking last week about uh, selling the soybean meal, and I hope you got it off because it's certainly uh, uh, been hit hard. Also, you know that is uh, you're absolutely right. I had set up trades, and in fact, I had a sell order waiting above the market uh, through the USDA re excuse me USDA report that came out yesterday Wednesday at noontime. And soy meal, the July, excuse me, the July meal did in fact pop, but missed my limit sell by two bucks, and now it's plummeted. So uh, uh, chalk that up to one of those uh, circumstances of woulda, coulda, <laughs> and shoulda, but those happen. I've got a bunch of un uncashed tickets like that in my drawer, my friend. So <laughs> don't don't feel like the Lone Ranger. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. Those uh, those we have to live with. Um, sure. I um, I would like to uh, change uh, 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 subjects if we could. Sure. And ask your view on the crude oil. I see currently July crude WTI oil is at one hundred six. And we, we know uh, what, what we've just learned in the past three days is that, unfortunately, it appears the country of Iraq is descending into civil war. Mm -hmm. And one thing we, uh, we also know as fact is Iraq as a country produces about 3.5 million barrels per day. What we don't know is whether or not those supplies will be disrupted. I would guess if they do get disrupted, uh, oil will be in short supply, prices will be higher. From a trader pers uh, trader's perspective, do you see any parameters that uh, we could use to trade this at this point, or is it is it beyond the point of being low enough risk to even get involved with? Well, you know, we had that triple top up at the 61% retracement at 105, and we challenged that just a few days ago, went above it, and all we're doing now is completing an ABCD pattern. There's a, a really strong uh, 786 level up at 108, which is another $2 per barrel. Frankly, John, I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of difference at three barrels, three million barrels a day. 
Um, but, you know, the, the news will make the difference. That's the problem is people react to this news, you know, very, very dramatically. But, uh, you know, frankly, I don't think it's going to mean a lot. Uh, I, I don't believe oil is going to get above 108 a barrel. If it does, you know, we, we could easily challenge, uh, you know, 122 a barrel if it does that. And I don't see it happening. To me, this is a very normal ABCD pattern that's forming here over the last two months that measures, you know, somewhere between 107 and 108. And, you know, what, you know it, we're watching the news today in, in crude oil. It's, you know, it's up a buck, uh, a buck and a half or so. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, almost two dollars, and you know that's not really much if there's going to be war in the Middle East. You know that usually that would be a five or ten dollar move. Gotcha. If uh, you had mentioned one hundred eight, and thanks so much for posting the daily chart with the patterns uh, in the Tiger's Den. It's by the way, the, the Tiger's Den is just a terrific, terrific venue for uh, traders to share. Uh, oh, share good a ideas amen with. to that, my friend. We we take our hats off and bow to to Tom O'Brien every day because this is really they got some smart people in there and you're uh, in my opinion numero uno my friend <laughs> so go ahead Tom well, I mean uh, it's John <laughs> th thanks for that compliment but I have to tell you I've learned so much from you so uh, I am indebted to you one uh, question you mentioned 108 as being a likely target but if something is Something bigger is brewing here. If, in fact, this market ultimately plows through 108 up towards that 113 or higher, my question is, if, that's a, if that scenario uh, evolves, and, of course, we won't know, we don't know, but if, you, if you're speculating upon such a scenario, What's the trade that you could put on for that? If you were to, would you buy it here? And if so, what stop would you have to use? Or if you wouldn't buy it here, what kind of pullback would you be looking for to buy? And what kind of stop would appear, appear to you as making sense? Well, John, my toughest thing in trading is buying breakouts and selling breakouts. I really have a real difficult with that because I just rely on the patterns. We've been up for basically five days in a row in the crude oil with very, very little retracement at all. So what yeah. I would be watching for would be uh, go to a half-hour chart and try to find an A, B, C, D, you know, the thunderbolt pattern to the downside is what I would be sure. looking for. That would give me a low-risk entry. I'm not, I'm not so much concerned about how much I could possibly make on trade. I'm more concerned about how much do I have to risk to see if it's going to get there. So exactly until, right. I, until, I, until I have a risk parameter, I really can't get involved with it. Got it. Got it. Um, if let me, uh, let me just pose this question. I'm looking at the July contract. Made a peak at 106.50. I see it's pulled back to 105.70, so down 80 cents. Mm -hmm. My question is, if, if in fact that 80 cent decline, a little bounce here, if that's followed by, say, another 80 cent decline, decline, excuse me, would that be the sort of thunderbolt pattern that you'd be potentially acting upon with risking something like 30, 40 cents? Is that kind of the idea? Yeah, that, that would be the idea. Well, I'd have to go down to a 30-minute chart just to see if that pattern is coming in because then, you know, maybe 80 cents is all you get, but you could get a $1.60 uh, or $2.60 retracement because we're up five days in a row. That yep. itself means that you're, you're overbought. So sure. I just have to wait until I see the pattern that allows me to enter without too much trouble. Thanks so much for that uh, for that overview. Uh, I might lastly ask. Uh, I'll uh, I'll uh, get off the line soon here. Let other callers come in. But could you address what you how you see this unfolding gold rally? What uh, what you think the potential is? Uh, whether um, whether it's likely to extend or top? I, I certainly appreciate hearing your thoughts on that matter. Sure. I'm going, I'm going to cover the gold in just a second, John, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a caller that's been uh, patiently waiting while we chatted, and so after I'm finished with him, I'm going to cover both gold and silver. How's that? Thanks so much. Do appreciate All right. it. Good talking to you, my friend, as always. Please keep calling in. You're good. Bye now. Okay. Well, we have a trifecta today, folks. We have our third caller from Florida, uh, Richard from Tampa. Are you there, Richard? Yes, sir, I am. What can I do for you, my friend? I was looking at the Australian uh, dollar futures contract, 
And yes. I saw that we made a, a good rally attempt up here, and it's been going up straight for about the last eight days. I was wondering if you think this is also overbought, or should we expect more gains if gold should keep rallying? Uh, it still looks strong to me. I posted the chart in there on the Australian dollar. Uh, we had a really nice pullback to a 382 about 13 days ago. The market went sideways for six days, and now it's going higher. Uh, I think we're going to make at least uh, 9520, at least another 100 pips higher. That's Good. what it looks like to me. Uh, so it's we've taken out the highs of May already. Uh, we're very old, we're very overbought. I, just like crude oil, I, I can't buy it here, but uh, I do believe that it looks like it looks higher to me in uh, the Australian dollar as opposed to lower. Think it's going to try to top where it did back in August of last year? Yes. I'm, well, not not that much, but I think we could get up to the one uh, ninety five twenty. You know, the old high was around ninety seven and change. So, but at ninety five uh, twenty. Uh, you're looking at a 786 retracement of the whole move from October of last year to uh, January of this year and then the rally up into June. So that would be where I would be taking a look at it. There's a couple of ABCDs coming in, 100 pips higher from where it is right now. Okay, that's, a, that's what I wanted to find out. I really appreciate it. Well, yeah, but between me and God's ears, right? I don't know if I'm right or not. That's just a technical point of view. I hope you understand no, honestly, that. That's what, yeah. that's what I was thinking, too. I just yeah. needed double confirmation. <laughs> well, let's hope let's hope it's double confirmation, okay? <laughs> All right, so you have a great day. Hey, thanks for calling in, Richard. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is we're going to switch over to the gold market because we uh we need to uh take a look at this gold and silver. I think it's just a little rally. That's just my opinion, uh probably related to what we're seeing here uh in the uh uh, Iraq, Iran, uh, whatever it is, I I don't even know. I don't follow that stuff, uh, you know. So we'll, I have to I have to give a funny story about uh, the the service type stuff. But let's put the gold up here, so we'll be able to see it. We've uh, we did we did hold down here, and we're having a pretty good rally. Now this rally, if it's any good, should not extend any past the sixty one percent retracement that comes in around uh, twelve ninety. That's about seventeen dollars. Uh, 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 per ounce from where we are right now, that would be around seventeen dollars per ounce uh, coming in at that at that particular point. I'm going to put that chart uh, into Tiger TV so you folks can take a look at it, and we'll see uh, we'll see what happens. See, we've got the Dow has uh, sold off a bit since we've been on the air, and uh, the bonds have actually sold off a little bit. The rest of the markets are holding um, pretty much where we were when we came on the air. Uh, the $64 question is, is the top end in the stock market? And, folks, I have no idea. And uh, all I'm doing is trading the interday swings that I see, and there's certainly plenty of those uh, to look at. So we need to watch those very, very closely. But I believe that uh, gold should have some trouble around the 1290 level. Uh, but the fact that we held the 1239 level and had a really good rally here for the last eight days tells us that we're probably getting pretty close to a, uh, a rally into that 1290 per, um, actually, yeah, it comes in around 1285, 1285, about $12. Okay, we'll be back in just a minute, 877-927-6648. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. 
Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks, and we were talking about gold before, the fact that it could get up to that 1285 level. It's only 12 bucks away from where it is right now. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to post the chart of silver because we have an interesting situation for the first time in a long time Silver is actually uh, perked up and is actually doing better than gold. If you'll notice, um, the silver chart, when it made new lows, just barely made new lows and couldn't go anywhere. Uh, we've rallied well over uh, 70 cents uh, per ounce, which is, uh, you know, $3,500. So that's a heck of a move. And the thing is that it's already making the 61% retracement of the high that we made back on uh, March the 12th, whereas you know, gold is still quite a ways from there. So the key today will be to go into the CME, www.cme.com, and then go in to look under market data, and you'll see open interest and volume in there, and go in and compare to see what open interest and volume is doing. Because if we have an increase in volume and open interest from this level right here, we're looking at, we're looking at higher prices. So that's the key. But if your open interest is dropping and the volume is dropping, all this is is short covering. And I know it might be related to the news of Iraq, whatever that news happens to be. But, uh, you know, we'll just have to, uh, to wait and see. Fortunately, I've been really lucky in my life. I've made some wonderful friends all over the world. 
and I have to say that one of my dearest friends is an Iraqi uh, citizen. His his family was uh, very influential there during the uh, time before the Shah, during the Shah, and then after the Shah, they were run out of the country. But uh, the the country itself, I, I know you probably don't know much about it, but it is really an incredible place. If you ever get a chance to uh, look at some of the pictures of the antiquities that are there, it's really quite amazing uh, to see what's there. So anyway, silver looks like it's got a chance here. We'll be, we'll be talking about this on Monday's show uh, to make sure that uh, we do have an open interest uh, increase and, and also a volume increase that tells us that maybe these metals are getting ready to uh, you know, see what's really see what's really happening right now. Uh, stocks are continuing to drop a little bit in here. Uh, you know, we we uh, might have topped on the full moon here on the twelfth, but you know, uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, if that is in fact the case. We're only one day one day into that, so we don't really know if this is going to be very much uh, of a factor at all. The market's coming down very, very quietly, which it should. And as I mentioned yesterday, it's going to give you plenty of chances to get in, either long or short. Just remember that. The fact that we, uh, you know, it's really, uh, it's really amazing here that we've got uh, uh, as little volume as we have in the market to make it, uh, you know, that way so it's uh, it's interesting here where we stand in a lot of these markets in fact you know we've got the grains coming down and the metals have been coming down which they finally been rallying over the five or six days and we're going to see the same kind of rally in the corn and the wheat and also the beans they just have to find the level that brings in buyers and we're looking for that right now we're going to watch this decent corn if it gets below the 440 in the first chance we got a low risk entry just like we did at the 618 we'll try it again Trading is about taking chances, taking your losses, knowing what your risks are, and just moving on to the next one. Forget about your losses. Forget about your profits. It's only the next trade, folks. That's kept me alive for 55 years, and it's made a great, uh, you know, a great thing to do because I love doing what I do, as you probably might guess, because I put in so many hours at it. But it's what I enjoy doing, and all my friends in the business have been in as long. Rich Anderson and Byron and all these other folks, Mark Douglas, they all do the same thing. We love what we do. And there's not many things you can do like this unless you're a rock and roll singer, and they ain't never going to get me there because I don't have any of the tools necessary uh, to do that, except I play a very mean harmonica. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, folks, and may God bless. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, the opening call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.